No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Mother f What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over! No comment! The f Brian Keane was also unavailable for comment. And welcome back once again to The Horror Show with Brian Keene, brought to you by the Project Entertainment Network and available for free, always free, every week free, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, YouTube, and all other platforms. I am, of course, your host, Brian Keene, with me, as always, Kelly Owen. Hello. Mary San Giovanni. Hi there. And Matt Wildeson. Hello. We have... A lot to get to this week. Yes. But before we get to it, Kelly, I have to ask. Now, your very first appearance on the show, you were episode three, I believe. Third episode. I'm of sorry. Did six, I do something like Six that? years on the air, Kelly was a, our our second guest. Our first guest ever in studio was Rob Swartwood. Uh, and Kelly was our second guest. And in that interview, you revealed that unlike 90% of the other writers of our generation, Stephen King was not your main influence. In fact, it was Dean Koontz. Yes, I loved me the Koontz. Um, <laughs> so, so I got to ask, yeah. Koontz's 1981 novel, The Eyes of Darkness. He didn't predict anything. <laughs> Fucking hell. If people are wondering what we're talking about, uh, 1981, you know, Dean writes a really excellent pandemic novel called The That's Eyes fun. of Darkness. That's no, great. Uh, it's about a killer virus named Wuhan 400... Uh, it was developed as a bioweapon in China's Wuhan Research Lab. Okay, now you threaded the needle. Okay. Yeah. Why, <laughs> why would we be talking about that? Um, but, Kelly, I, I know that you you are really following the coronavirus. I'm getting distracted because Mary, of course, has left her alarm on and can't find her phone. Hi, welcome to the show. If you're a new listener... Yeah, this is pretty much what it's like all the time. I know this you, is Brian's life. Yeah, you've really been following the coronavirus. I like to pay attention to shit that can kill me. Um, and you wanted to talk about it at the start of the show, so let's talk about it. Well, what I wanted to talk about was one of the things that Bob Bob Ford, for those that don't know, just Bob, just Bob, just author, just author author Robert just Ford. Just, what about Bob? Just Bob. What about Bob? <laughs> no, Bob and I have been what talking about, about it. We've been following it, and one of the one of the conversations that we had recently was. It, I mean, it's coming. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, people don't have to panic. I don't, I don't think that we have to panic about, you know, getting horribly sick and dying because 80% of the people don't show symptoms or they have just a mild case or whatever. Exactly. What we need to be aware of and what we're really paying attention to is when local governments decide, well, in order to put a kibosh on this, we're going to have to tell everybody, stay inside for two weeks. Right. Right. Self quarantine. That's the part we're paying attention to. And the conversation we had, which I said we should talk about it because it does pertain to our world, is we're writers. We poe. Most writers are poor. <laughs> Most writers yeah. don't have health insurance. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. So when they get the flu, but it's they don't not do the anything flu, about it. They're not gonna do anything about it. They're not gonna go get tested. They're not gonna go they're not gonna find out. And then we're all gonna get together and hug at conventions. No, it's it's gonna be a good time. Writers are gonna actually <laughs> Writers you know, are gonna destroy the world. Writers are gonna destroy the world. <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> <laughs> that was not where I was going. That's where Mary was. Those of us who stayed inside for two weeks, though, right. we become the kings. But, exactly. But the meek will inherit the There's that whole idea that, A, writers, most writers don't have health insurance. Right. So they're not going to get checked. They're not going to get put on the numbers. They're not going to 
backtrack where you've been and what you've touched and who you licked. Although the good thing is that writers probably haven't been to any of the countries. They stay inside because a lot. They don't have so money it's for all good. Yeah, they stay However, inside for the most part and they don't have don't, money for plane tickets. But you don't need to go to other countries now. It's spreading without that. It's now That's within. True. The other thing was the poor portion because a lot of writers are poor. So uh, while I'm stocking up my house, I'm thinking, Christ, how many people do I know live paycheck to paycheck and can't afford to not get paid for two weeks? Can't afford to stock up. Right. What if I'm stuck inside for a month and I have to stock up? Right. In this business, there is a lot of people who are not prepared for something like this to happen. Right. I agree. Um, you know, I, I posted my thoughts on, on Twitter last week. Uh, just, you know, things that everybody, regardless of your financial situation, mm-hmm. can do to be a little prepared. Uh, Wash your fucking you know, hands. My... Whoops. Oh, that's you know, your alarm. alarm. Who's who's who's, who's, who's that now? <laughs> it's it's Jeff Cooper. Should it's we not, answer? It's yes, not Mary yes, song. we should. Hi, Coop. Before you say anything, you're live on the air with us. Hey, should Cooper. I call you back later? Yes, you should. Okay, we'll call you back when we're done. Jeff Cooper, everybody. Yay! Um, so, my my concern, you know, not only is uh a member of the board of directors for Scares That Care, but as, as somebody who does a lot of signings and convention appearances, etc. Handshaking, et taking money. Well, not only that, as I said Money's to Rio filthy. Ewers, my, my concern, I intend to still go out and just use common sense, hand sanitizer, right. you know, fist bump instead of a handshake. Uh, my concern is playing to empty bookstores and empty convention centers. So I, I did a, yeah. an informal poll on Twitter. Uh, I said, does concern over the coronavirus and the impact that fears and uncertainty over it may have on people's finances, travel, etc., have you reconsidering attending conventions and signing this year? This year. Um, 275 people voted. 44.5% of them said, yes, I'm still attending. Wow. That's a lot. 46% said, I'm going to wait and see. That would be me. 9.5% 9.5% said, no, I'm staying home. And I'm not flying. I've already decided that. I'm flying nowhere this year. If I'm going, I'm driving. So I found that interesting. Now I can agree with you on that one. And I'm, yeah, not, I'm not flying. I am not making fun of you for this, Kelly. Uh, pretty big thing. Next next week, Mary, you and I are going to travel to New York. We're going to meet with uh, the folks at Tor Books, specifically the new Nightfire Mass Market Horror imprint. We're going to interview them, have them on the show. Um, Kelly, you were excited to go on that. I was. And, I was and, very looking forward to it. And yes. You're not because it's New York City. And New I'm York. not going to make fun of you. Yeah, I get it's New that. York. Between now and then, I think that there's going to be a big reason for you guys to probably not go to. Well, we'll see. Um, you know, like I said, I'm never ever going to give in to fear, but I certainly am using common sense. Mary will be the first to tell you. I did an inventory last week on what we had yep. for dry goods, yep. on what we had for ammunition. By the way, speaking of ammunition, quick aside, G. Arthur Brown, <laughs> who long time you listeners... You literally sat over there figuring out how to do that. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I, said, like, I, said, yeah. I could see the gears turning. Yeah, right? I, I should say the author, the author formerly known as G. Arthur Brown, he's, oh, now, he a symbol now? he's now rebranded himself as Gary Brown, doesn't change, you know... Those those sexual assault, sexual harassment. You know, what what was it? It was sexual assault, right? I, I don't I, I don't want to misquote. I think it, it was a I sleeping think, woman on an airplane, assault, yeah. and then the 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 neighbor whose window he climbed in through in I, her apartment. Yeah. yeah so I I don't know what that is. It, it's called being creepy. A creeper. The words you were looking yeah. for was creepy. Being a creeper. Okay. Yeah. He's got this new diatribe that, that somebody sent me. Uh, you know where. He's talking about the horrible people in the industry. Of course, Carlton Mellick, uh, Cameron Pierce, Jeremy Robert Johnson, who's oh never God said see. boo to a fly. <laughs> oh and me. And he says, uh, he says that You're the anti- I, anti- I am a secretive gun toting conservative. Wait, you're not secretive about gun toting. Yeah, I, I don't think hey, I'm not a secretive. Yeah. A, I'm not a conservative, Gary. Uh, B, I make no secret that I support the Second Amendment. I also believe that there should be very, very stricter laws on who can own a gun, what kind of gun they can own. I don't believe I should legally be allowed to own an AR-15, and I will be very happy. Actually, I don't even have an AR-15 anymore. Please don't cop to having any illegal guns in the house. Well, no, they're not illegal. I got got rid of mine. No, my dad has one. 
you know, I, I got rid of mine. Go but point is, you, I'm, I'm right here, dude. Okay, I'm not changing my fucking name to try to change my fucking past. <gasps> Can I do that? What? No. It's not. A, it's well, not. Well, I mean, really a thing. I'm gonna become K something something. You can, but <laughs> you'll have about as much luck as 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 Gary did. So anyway, Gary. That See, brief to me, aside, the name Gary, when you say it with that tone, is the snail Gary. and SpongeBob. <laughs> you know, and I wasn't <laughs> Gary. I wasn't even. Just leaves a slime up, trail everywhere he somebody goes. Somebody sent it to me, <laughs> and, and I said, "Okay, you know what? He's got a mouth off about me. I'll return the <sighs> fucking favor." There's your free plug, asshole. Um, I don't know. Maybe sit down <laughs> okay. and try writing a book. That would help. You know, and, and then the plug Keep will actually be worth yourself, something. Keep your hands you know, like they taught you in kindergarten. <laughs> Keep your hands on the keyboard at all times. Oh, but wash them so you don't get coronavirus. <laughs> and there's the segue back. <laughs> Fist bump Kelly. Oh wash your freaking hands. I have seen so many people in airports. This is why I won't go through airports. Because I, and this is what I said in response to your poll on Twitter. I said, I'm treating coronavirus just like I do driving. I trust my abilities. It's the rest of you. I don't, you know, right, I don't yeah. know if, I don't know when you washed your hands last. I have no idea. But like in an airport, I have seen hundreds of people go to the bathroom. Okay. Just going to the bathroom. You're touching a stall door that a million people have touched. You're touching a flusher or yeah. a button that a million people have touched. And then they come out and this is my favorite. They turn on the water and they go like this under the water. They like wiggle their fingers in the water yeah, and that. leave. Like, what did that do? That'll do it. <laughs> what right? What did that do? I don't know what that did. But then, like that, they go and they touch the door. Like, ew, mm. it's just gross. I have a little hand sanitizer when I travel. Yeah, I have hand sanitizer. Because I refuse to touch the sink. Also, when you get close to a public sink, why is it always wet? It's always wet. What is wrong because with people? Because of people is doing that. People? I guess yeah. it's people's, yeah, it's can, people's it's fingers. People. Can I, can I it's them doing the jazz hands it's under the water. It's the jazz <laughs> hands under the water. No, it's always the Jazz hands is not a solution. So I use, I use hand sanitizer, and then I use my shirt to open the door to get out. I touch I nothing will, in there. I will not use. And I use my foot to flush. You want to use hand sanitizer? I will not, no, I will not use no. a public sink. And I've, no, I've, they're I've disgusting. I've taught Dungeon Master the same thing. Okay, I don't know about the women's restroom. but It's wet! You go in the men's restroom. All right. First of all, and I feel in almost any fucking public restroom, most of the automatic hand, like the sinks, they don't, don't work. fucking work they don't anymore. Work. No, yeah. they don't. <laughs> yeah. We got to do you like go, the, you go in like the, the you go in the men's room, you, have to you get step it to up work. to the urinal, <laughs> you touch your junk. Yeah. Okay. And what's the first thing after you put your junk back in and zip up? What's the first thing you touch? You flush. The no, no, they you touch the faucet to turn the sink on. Okay, maybe you flush. You. But then, yeah, you touch the faucet to turn you on the You touch sink. the faucet. So I've taught... No, the whole place is disgusting. I've taught Dungeon Master we No, I flush with my foot. Mm. So. I flush with my foot and no, I touch it, nothing. And it's probably a Here's good idea. Here's my thing idea. about... I, I, I don't think... You know, like Kelly said, I, I mean... Most of the people who get this coronavirus are going to live. They're going to survive. Yeah, most people are going to be fine. Most of the people that it's killing, it's killing... Because they are, they they're, have some type they're of elderly compromising. Or they have a compromising something exactly. going they're on. Either, they're either high blood elderly. pressure has been listed as one of the things that is a complication. Oh, so if you well, if you go in with high blood pressure, what happens is it that raises your your chance of being critical. In people well, with compromising immune systems, it causes fantastic something fantastic like news. pneumonia. You're welcome. It causes something like and pneumonia. heart problems. I'm just saying it is pneumonia, but it is. But it's worse she's, than pneumonia. She's gleeful about it. <laughs> She's it's, smiling. The listeners can't see it. Kelly, know, she's, she's, like, like, <laughs> she's like looking at Brian like, yeah, how much dry goods did you pack? Oh, by the way, <laughs> high blood pressure, heart complications. It goes, it goes after middle-aged white, just, white man. I just, straight white man. I just if your name's Brian, you have a 100% failure rate. Whose initials are BK? <laughs> Gary, I just want him to be aware Gary that, Gary Brown know, can take solace that my privilege will not save When he's in New York. I just want him to be aware but no, this anyway, pneumonia my point is, is that lower people, lung pneumonia. And it has right. conservatives it's not directly. And it causes you to lower essentially right, wait, drown. stop. Well, yes, you drown. Because you're all talking over each other. My yes. point is, I don't... It's it's one of those things I would worry about the way I worry about the flu, you know? Right. Because it's not... It's most likely not going to kill you. But I think that <laughs> it's wise to... T because it spreads so fast, and because it has this long incubation period... 
crazy long incubation period where you're right. still contagious. Right. So what are we talking, like two, three weeks? Like two yeah. weeks. Yeah. Like up to 27 days they've sure. tracked now. Oh, really? I need a vacation. But the, I'm the just going to stay in my house and play pool <laughs> for two days. I'll be, or for two well, weeks. Well, here's the fun. thing, though. Here's the thing. We can't sit in the house and play pool because we have two things coming up that the listeners need to know about. If you've enjoyed this banter, yeah, and you would like to be a part of it, if you'd like to be there live, <laughs> you want to be a part of this to interject when Kelly says the coronavirus is going to kill me because of my high blood pressure. I didn't say it was going to kill you. I said you had a higher chance for being critical. No, every year, yeah, exactly. Every year on this show, we do something called listener mailbag where. People write in questions and we answer them live on the air. This year, we're actually going to do it live. March 28th at the West Shore Farmers Market. That is in Lemoyne, Pennsylvania, specifically at the Air Studio Store. Uh, starting promptly at noon, Mary, Kelly, myself, Matt, possibly Dave, possibly Dungeon Master 77.1, um, Taking questions live from the audience, and we're going to answer them. And, uh, you know, those of you who can't make it, of course, can listen at home. We'll also be signing books for you. We probably will not be shaking your hand. <laughs> I will bump elbows with anybody who wants. And then, of course, <laughs> April 17th through the 19th, uh, we will be, Matt will not be there. Oh, Jesus. But the rest shit. of us will be. <laughs> We'll Damn be, you, we'll be in, kind of jumped at you there. We'll be in Racine, Wisconsin for yeah. Scares the Care, Wisconsin. I'm um, driving. For all the information on that, go to scaresthecareweekend.com and scroll down to Wisconsin. Um, the big moldy cheese picture. That's right. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, before we get into anything else, wait. What, okay, what's but, up, Matt? I was, but, Matt, oh, the Max cat was, was like pulling on the cord. No, the, the, the cat was, so was messing like, with the cord. Please don't. Um, before we leave that, though, <laughs> is there anything that, that our poor fellow writers who maybe can't afford to stock up or who don't have health insurance, I mean, what should they be doing? Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. And, and I agree with Joe Hill. Uh, you know, we, we can't give in to fear on this thing. There's a no. lot there's of, a lot of fear there's a lot of misinformation out there. No, but you should be aware. If, if you saw it on Facebook, it's a 50 50 chance of it actually Do being true. People still get their news on Facebook. Um, here's, here's, <laughs> here's some common sense, non fearful shit you can do. Okay. If this thing gets bad, you may want to stay in your house for two weeks. You may not want to go out to the grocery store. You may not want to go anywhere. Walmart. Okay. Um, so Schools, have, have, yeah. have two weeks of food on hand. Now, Brian, I'm a writer. I'm a, a listener. I can't afford two weeks of food. Well, you'd be surprised what you can afford. Ramen. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Matt yeah, says ramen not, not noodles. two weeks worth of, you know, steak and asparagus. Ramen, yeah. Canned right. soups. Of, you like want to stay away. Soups? You want to yeah. stay away from frozen goods and fresh right. veggies. We're talking dry goods, canned goods, things with a long shelf life. Okay. Mm -hmm. That after the coronavirus has passed, you can still eat. Well, and that's the other thing. Don't buy things you wouldn't eat normally. Right. Because yeah. you're just going to eat them eventually right. then. You yeah. just don't and have so, to shop as you know, much. Stock up on two weeks worth of extra stuff. Again, non-perishable, right. dry goods, right. canned goods. And do, do the same for your pets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Get yes. dog food, cat food, whatever. But also, not that it's a pet. I'm going to turn this into a really bad joke and somebody's going to get me for this. But for the people out there who... Um, have working uteruses, you Buy don't want to run out of supplies. Like right. I Right. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's something I would have never thought of, man. Yeah. That's yeah. why that's why it's yeah. good to have you know, Mary and, and Kelly. And I, I mean I had a hysterectomy, <laughs> I'm fine, but if things go sour, we're gonna get both of the daughters will be back at the house. So I had my daughter tell me, okay, what do we need for for right. the two of you? Yeah. And we stashed it so that they've got it. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. But we also stashed, you know, make sure that you have aspirin, ibuprofen, acetaminophen. Yeah, medicine, not only whatever, that, but you your know, medications. If you're, yeah. uh, if you're a diabetic, for example, if you're like Dave. By the way, Dave will be joining us later this episode. Yay. You, da, 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 da. Yeah, you guys didn't know that. Didn't That's know a little that. surprise I, I just sprung on you. Um, you know. If you're a diabetic, 
talk to your doctor now about getting some extra insulin in yeah. case you need to yeah, self-quarantine. Yeah. Well, far- um, pharmacies, like, well, pharmacies... Pharmacies won't. You have to ask but, the doctor. Say, but many doctors do will. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know... In you the just, face of this, you yes. gotta, you gotta, you just gotta, you gotta communicate with them. You gotta talk to them about it. Um, Make sure you have bottled water on hand. Bottled too. water. Yep. You know, look, is the is the electrical grid going to collapse? Probably not. Actually, can I save the planet but, just real quick there? Instead of get because you have to have a gallon of water a day, a day yeah. per person. So for the four of us for two weeks, that's a lot of bottles. It but is. if you go it buy is. those seven dollar jugs, empty jugs, true, and fill it out of your sink, because here's the thing: food you're going to need, but unless electricity goes, you're going to have water. Right. So get one of those, you know, get a couple of those jugs. You know, if it's a five gallon jug, that's me for a week. Mm-hmm. Four of those jugs is going to be less plastic, take up less room. You know, and when you're not using it, you just stash it in the basement or whatever until the next time we, you know, all have a pandemic. Right. Well, let me worry correct about myself. a pandemic. Store water. Store water. Yes. Also, almond milk like lasts almond milk. longer than regular milk. Yeah, it does. I like almond milk. Um, I don't. I don't I'm not a milk person right. either way. But <laughs> all, right. all right, Brian's like, we don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's move the fuck well, on. We're all, we're into the. We're into the pros and cons of almond milk now, and while that's no, worthwhile, no, no, I'm just saying for two weeks because our, milk our is going to go bad. Our average listener is is now a hitting horror the best show horrible. with Brian Key. <laughs> now with fifty percent know. more almond milk. I was just pointing out it lasts I, longer. I tease, I tease. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, before we get yes. into the Stokers, yes, yes. And our annual betting on the Stokers, I came which always which always gets us in more trouble than anything else we do on this show. It does. Yeah. Um, we have some yeah, very we, we have some very big changes coming. Uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. and told you folks I would let you know when I made a decision. Uh, I made a decision. Uh, the horror show started out on the Project I Radio Network during our second year we became part of the Project Entertainment Network. Mm-hmm. Uh, beginning April 1st, in the midst of what is now our sixth year on the air, uh, we will become the flagship podcast for the new Brian Keene Radio Network, which will also include Defenders Dialogue, Cosmic Shenanigans, Grindcast, as well as a few forthcoming surprises. Um, and maybe the return of Buttercup. <gasps> That was that was one of the other forthcoming surprises, but no, Kelly it's a maybe. Okay. It's still a maybe. It's um, still a hard maybe. You know, you as a listener, you're not going to be impacted by this change. You'll still be able to hear episodes of each podcast wherever you're listening to it now. Um, you'll also be able to hear them on the new 24 seven live streaming venture, which is just a rebooted and revamped Brian Keen Radio. I've gotten all the bugs out of it. Now I'm confident in it. Um, that will all be April 1st. Uh, all and it's of, not an April Fool's joke. No, it's not an it's April real. Fool's joke. This is the date that Armand picked for everything of to change over. <laughs> um, all the old shows are still going to be there. You know, you'll still have access to all those. Um, you may notice some changes to the structure of each show. Uh, new theme music, new title cards. The advertising might pre- be presented in a different way. But otherwise, it's going to be business as usual. Uh, the one thing that will change, however, is advertising. Beginning April 1st, advertisers can sponsor individual podcasts or take advantage of network-wide savings. To do that, you're going to want to send an email to thegrindedword at gmail.com. Uh, all other queries, such as I want to be a guest or anything like that. Briefs or boxers. Brian Keen at live.com. Okay. If you email Matt, for anything other than advertising, I have instructed him to delete your email and not even respond to you. I okay? still put a 20 spot on that happening. <laughs> yeah, Matt, it's not a workaround to get to Brian if he's not answering. Brian isn't either. answering me. Can you tell him this? Yeah. <laughs> then I can be like, well, he doesn't really answer doesn't me answer. either. <laughs> Honestly, that's no, your, re- your response is Brian who? I, I tell people, I said, get him on Twitter. I said, he doesn't answer my texts either. And I live with him. Yeah, so. Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, and you could you could also hit me up on my Twitter for that for the ad stuff yeah. too if you want. And on a personal note, I just note, want you to send me funny emojis. Yes, yeah, send Twitter. Kelly funny emojis. Uh, um, I'd, I'd like clown porn. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Stop it. I would like to personally thank 
Shelly and Armand of the Project Entertainment Network uh, for the mutual support they've given us over the last five years. It's been a wonderful partnership. I also want to thank Tommy Clark, who has engineered Defenders Dialogue since its inception. I sincerely look forward to continuing to support all three of them as a listener and a friend, and I hope that you, the listeners, will support them and their great lineup as well. And, of course, we look forward uh, to you continuing to listen to us in this new venture. Yay! So there it is. Happy April Fool's. Now, yeah, I should mention, we're recording this in the living room because it's very cold outside. The neighbor is cranking their music. Yeah, what is that? Matt, what are we listening what to? What are the chances it's picking it up? Let's be quiet for a moment. We should be fine. We should be Nash fine. Because I could go up there and, and, and no, it's the have news. them. No, you should be fine. It's coronavirus. I'll now. just go up and cough. I have a theory that she's a serial killer. She drags bodies down the stairs. She yells at her dog not to chew on the dead bodies. Um, I think she drags them across the floor. All I'm right. pretty sure there's some, there's some sinister I'm shenanigans gonna st- going I'm going to stop there. you. Only because most serial killers are at least social. Which means she's more likely a cannibal. She could be a cannibal. She does listen to this show, too. So, on occasion. So, I would like to note that it was you, Mary, who said that, not me. <laughs> she has, I don't think she likes me much, anyway. All right. You know, you know, maybe what she does like is adamandeve.com. Really? Maybe when she goes, well, you know, she's... Uh, I didn't know they were back. She, she, she lives alone up there, um, you know. And is adamandeve.com isn't just for couples. It's for singles as well. And when you go there, if you use offer code K-E-E-N-E at checkout, you'll get 10 free tantalizing gifts. That's K-E-E-N-E only at adamandeve.com. There, that's the ad. Oh, oh my God. And coronavirus Adam and Eve, don't forget your batteries. No, what, what if... What if it wasn't a body that she had falling and dragging across the floor, but one of her gifts from Adam and Eve? Done? One of those ten <laughs> green tantalizer gifts. My goodness. Well, you know what? That one called like Big Jim or something props, like that props falls under the floor. Props to her. If she can handle Big Jim like that, then you, know, you go for your sister. All right. So, <laughs> for those of you who kept fast-forwarding past the almond milk and everything, we're now to why you tuned in That's this a valid week. point. I don't know why you got picked yeah, It was a great valid point, but, you know. Go buy your wife extra pads. That's right. Um, we're now going to cover the 2019 Bram Stoker Awards final ballot. Now, yes. we do this every year. This is our sixth year doing this. Let me explain to new listeners or slow listeners... <laughs> What we are doing here, okay? We are attempting to put ourselves in the minds of the HWA voting membership. We are not picking who deserves to win. We're picking who we think will win, okay? Oh, yeah. In some cases, the book we pick may be the one we think does deserve to win. In other cases, it will not. Uh, It's up to each individual person here whether they want to say who they think deserves to win. I'm just going to say who I think will win. I, I'd like to okay. say who I think will win. But that's all we're doing. It's not a judgment on anyone's writing ability. Oh, God, no. You know, it, it's no, not us. No, some of them I've picked I haven't read. Yeah, it's not us making fun of you. All we're trying to do is be Vegas odds makers and pick who we think is going to win. Okay? We do this disclaimer every year, and every year at least one person gets mad at us. Really? Yes. Just one? At least one. Underachievers. I mean, <laughs> come at me, bro. Try harder. So, Try harder. I mean, in the day and age of the internet where everyone can be pissed off for no good reason because their bagel was crooked. These are the 2019 Bram Stoker Awards, the final ballot. The winners will, of course, be announced at StokerCon in the UK, same weekend as Harv, or excuse me, Scares the Care Racine, Wisconsin. I need one of you. To be the scorekeeper. Who wants to be in charge of that? Yeah, that's you. Whoever. You want to be in charge of that? Well, wait. What what do they have to score? They have to write down what our picks were for each category. For each person? I already have shit. I have it typed, so I can just add, um, you know. All right. So you'll write down me and and Matt's and yours and Dave's. I was just saying, I can write down. I can write write down everybody next to this. Yes, that's right, Matt. I said Dave. 
Yes, because Dave has sent in his picks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kelly's busy doing their. Their. I was doing like, their do you have him hiding right in the house somewhere? No. <laughs> but Dave has sent in his picks and commentary for at least one of the <laughs> and commentary. You can have that back. That's perfect. Dave wrote a mini essay for one of the categories. Did he really? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. I'm going to try to read it. Who does a better Dave impression? Me or you? I've never tried to do a Dave impression. Let me Why hear your Dave. Why would you bother to do that? Uh, I don't. The man is already. You know, I don't even. I, 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 all right, I'll, I'll, do Dave. I'll do Dave as Eeyore. Please oh, well, now we're doing it as people. Oh, as okay. characters. Okay. Yeah, right. The man so. is recovering. <laughs> the man is recovering. Good God. All right. Should we start from the bottom and work our way up or the, the top and work our well. way down? All right. So, Giggity. final ballot. Power bottom. Yep. I would have done bottom. Superior achievement in a novel. Yep. Okay. The nominees are Al going back for Coyote Rage. Josh Mallerman for Inspection, S.P. Miskowski for The Worst is Yet to Come, Lee Murray for Into the Ashes, and Chuck Wendig for Wanderers. Now, in this category, I was lucky enough to read each of these books. Uh, I think all five of them are very deserving of their placement here. I have to pick who I think the membership is going to award it to, not who I think deserves it. So here's my thought process, and I'm stalling for the others. Uh, Al, going back up for Lifetime Achievement Award this year, the membership may be drawn to that. Josh Mallerman, I can't think of a hotter property in horror right now than Josh. And Josh, you know I love you, kiddo. But, you know, in the minds of the membership, he's a hot property. He's Josh Mallerman. Um, S.P. Mikowski, Lee Murray. Both popular among the membership. Chuck Wendig has the social media imprint. You know, the presence. I think the membership is going to go to either Al or Chuck, and I'm going to say it's Chuck Wendig for Wanderers. I I think... See, I was torn between Al and Josh. Okay. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be Al. Okay. Now, are you writing these down? No, or? Kelly's writing. Oh, Kelly's writing them. Um, okay. I think it's going to be Al because he's getting the Lifetime Achievement Award, and I think that that's how the membership is thinking. So, I think it's going to be Al. Okay. Matt, what about you? I think I'm going to go with Al as well, just because of the whole uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. Usually, they like to hand more out when you're getting stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Kelly, what are your thoughts? My thoughts were actually between Josh and Chuck, because... They're both very popular, but I think more people are trying really hard. Oh, and I'm going to be Brian, and I love you, Josh, but I think that more people are trying to crawl close enough to kiss his ass than Chuck's, so I'm going with Josh. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. and again, nobody be offended. I know Josh isn't going to be offended. He listens to this show every week. Um, no, and I adore him. Yeah, Josh, um, and knows, I, it, Josh He deserves it. Josh is sitting there right now be, laughing his ass off. Right. Okay. I think it's going to be because people are trying to kiss yeah. his ass. But for those who are offended that but Kelly's suggesting you might vote for Josh just to kiss his ass, ask yourself what you're offended about. <laughs> also, my mommy taught me in kindergarten that you have to choose to be mad about something, so that's on you, not All right. me. Dave. Dave says Chuck Wendig because it's Chuck Wendig, and Thank because you. the novel involves a pandemic, which is in the news lately. Dave's smart boy. Okay, that makes All right. sense. So, what's yeah. what's the tally there, Kelly, for for superior achievement in a novel? Um, Mary and Flower. I changed you to Flower from Dandelion because two Ds was confusing. So, Mary and Flower. If you could just use my fucking <laughs> name. <laughs> no, because then it would be a Matt, which is an M like wait, Mary. Wait, I have to. I have to interject something. Okay, so for. Our appearance <laughs> on March 28th, you know, keep in mind, we're, we're going to do the live Q&A at Stephen Kozanowski's Partners Balloon Store. Mm -hmm. And she's going to make special collectible balloons fashioned after each of us. My balloons, and you can get them there, only there that day. This isn't something that's going to be sold online. You have to show up in person to get it. I know where this okay? is going. Yours so, be flowers? for me, Fucking Christ. she's making earthworms, giant earthworms, coming out of a, a earth-shaped balloon. Aww. Uh, for Kelly, I think the discussion was a uh, teeth-shaped balloon. Um, for Mary, it's tentacles. And she said, what about Matt? And I said, well, 
Matt's only going to have short story collections, and I, I don't know what you would pick from the short story collection. And Kazanowski, who's on speakerphone, says, just do a fucking dandelion. <laughs> and I said, yes, that's perfect. So, Matt, your, no, your no, fans... No, I would buy the dandelion. Your fans can get an exclusive Matt Willis and the dandelion. The sadness on his face. <laughs> the sadness. It's so I sad. Wish, I, wish, I wish there was I'm a... I'm glad my <laughs> early career with this is just a fucking joke. <laughs> Really glad. Why am I still I doing this? Do it. Go find yourself your own fucking goddamn <laughs> editor and engineer. M for Mary and D for Dave left you F for Flower. That's all. Because I'm not writing names. I'm just putting in initials. What would you like instead of the And you know it. I love you. So. What would you like your balloon to be? What it, represents... It, it doesn't matter. Anymore. What represents horrors untold? It doesn't matter. See, it doesn't matter anymore. you can't then get no, mad at me do. for picking a dandelion. I am just the man behind the curtain. No, you're not. Pay no attention <laughs> to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> We've broken mats. Oh, my God. I said to Mary Jimmy a couple Ice months cream. ago, I want to see how far we can push him before he breaks on the air. We oh, found yeah. the threshold. <laughs> yeah, just keep making my career a joke. Oh, eventually, God. it'll just break a man. <laughs> I'll buy the flower. I don't give a fuck what you buy, Kelly. How about? I'll buy teeth, and then it'll eat the flower. <laughs> <laughs> my balloon will pop your balloon. Your balloon can grow out of the compost of my balloon. You're not balloon. saving this, Brian. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're not saving it. I'm broken. <laughs> I'm crying. I don't even know putting my points down for this anyway. It doesn't matter. because I'm not here. really here. <laughs> I'm glad I signed in for God knows how many more years of this shit. Oh, yes. <laughs> your, your soul is ours. All right. I'll have a new yeah. book that day, too, if anybody gives a fuck. What's, oh, well, see, will what's you? the new book? Like that day? Horizontal really? Told Volume 2. Okay. Nice. What is a visual from that you that they can so turn into? kissing a... my ass right No, no, no. Oh, what's a visual That's from really, that? That's really, like, conveniently perfect. What's one visual from Horizontal Told 2 that they can turn into a balloon? I'll get back to you on that. I what's your wait? What's what's the theme of your favorite story in it? Is there like a monster or something? I'll I'll look through it. I brought the proof copy today. Did you? Is it a? Oh, and for the record, don't ever accuse me of kissing your ass. I don't kiss anyone's ass. Is it? Is it? All right, you're just trying to make me feel better. Yeah, that I can do. Is there like a story about an engineer who nobody ever notices and Aww. then he snaps? Actually, one day. yeah, there is a story I wrote about <laughs> myself in here. Is there? Yeah, it's yeah, about well, a guy who sees the better part of himself in the mirror all the time, and it's his. Uh, his basically mental issue that he has to get over. That's a great idea. Yeah. It goes back to that day I talked about how I drink a fifth of vodka and spit yes, in my image before I go over. I wonder, I wonder if they and could spit put in my image. I wonder if Amy could put a mirror in a balloon. I mean, she's oh, she pretty can. impressive. I'm sure she can. As long as it doesn't have sharp edges, I would, I would imagine. I mean, she's put well, all It's a mirror. Of... Well, yeah, but mirrors, glass is sharp. And balloons but generally. Nuts. Sharp. Don't like sharp. Okay, things. you can go back to your thing. I'll pick authors. We'll do the thing. We'll have a fun time. We'll sing and dance. Go. <laughs> Let's go, Keen. Read the shit. Let's go. I love him more and more all the time. Oh, he's, he's the best thing we've ever added to the show. <laughs> for better or for worse? Sing and dance. <laughs> sing and dance and do your thing, God damn it! Let's sing and dance. Superior. Uh, I, I have flashbacks to Chuck D and Flavor Flav's fight going on in this right now. Mm. Superior achievement in a first novel. The nominees are Gamma Amor for Dear Laura, Eric Guinard for Doorways to the Dead Eye, Michelle Renee Lane for Invisible Chains, Sarah Reed for The Bone Weaver's Orchard, Caitlin Starling for The Luminous Dead. I've read two of these. Um, read The Bone Weaver's Orchard, read The Luminous Dead, enjoyed them both immensely. Um, you know, Eric Guinard has a lot of play inside HWA. You know, he's a very involved member. So there is that. Um, but I, I suspect it's going to go to Sarah Reed. So put me down for Sarah Reed, the Bone Weaver's Orchard. Why? I think Sarah Reed too. Why? Why do you think Sarah Reed? Um, why did you? I want to see if, if our answers line up. Of the, 
of the writers who are putting out a first novel, I've heard the most about Sarah Reed. And I think that in lieu of having read everything on the ballot, uh, there is a, a tendency, an inclination perhaps to um, vote for the name you've heard of. That's, that's a, actually valid. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my line of thinking. Sarah has the, the biggest online presence. You see yeah. her name mentioned the most. And Dave also picks Sarah. He says, Sarah Reed, I have not read any of these, but of the nominees, she is the one I've seen talked about most online. So, Matt, what about you? Ditto. Ditto? Yeah. Okay. Go with that? Same reason. Same reason? I'm yeah. going to be the one off. Uh, and I would like to point out real quick that uh, Gemma is self-published. How often have we had that? That is kind of rare, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. I don't know if she's the first, but it is rare. It's it is rare. rare. Yes. So I, mean, I, I think that's pretty cool. Wasn't last year, um, <laughs> forgive me, I can't remember the author's name, but the one that did Bird Box, wasn't that independently published Bird at first? Box. Josh Mallerman? <laughs> Not Bird. That was Josh Mallerman. Was that Bird? Am I saying the right title? Well, Bird Box was Josh Mallerman. Yeah, but okay, that, yeah. Wasn't, that wasn't independently published. Oh, I thought it was. I'm mm. sorry. Nope. Never mind. I thought you were being funny. But no, there, no. Oh, there, have, the there have been... You know, Kelly, you've stumped me here. I don't. I got to go back well, and see, look. I'm, and I'm not sure. Time, I'm not sure. Time, HWA you, would there not was a rule. It couldn't be for a long time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I saw that. I thought that was really cool. Of course, that's not who I'm voting for. Um, I'm going to go with Invisible Chains. Uh, By Michelle Renee Lane. Yeah. 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 Uh, because, and here's one for you. Here's a really good excuse for you. Based on the publisher. Haverhill. Yeah. Yep. John McElvey, yep. our, our dear friend John McElvey. Yep. Because the Stokers are nothing if not a giant hug. And um, they all want to be on Mac's list. That's true. And and oh. McElveen is, is good at promotion at conventions and such. And he's picky. It won't be a crap book. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's valid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of that is valid. Yeah. Yep. So, no, I'm going for Mac on that one. Congrats, Mac. All right. <laughs> Superior Achievement in a YA, Young Adult Novel. Um, so I have not read. Wrong. I have not read any of these this year. Uh, the <clears throat> nominees are Amalinda Barube for Here There Are Monsters, uh, Anne Davilia Cardinal for Five Midnights, Liana Gardner for Speak No Evil, Kate Alice Marshall for Rules for Vanishing, uh, Nazandi for Aware Mosaic. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And Peter Adam Salomon for 8 minutes 32 seconds. Um, Dave says, YA. Kate Alice Marshall. I don't read YA, so I'm really unable to judge here, but I thought this was the best title. I like yeah. the title. I really yeah. like the title. It's kind of a fun title. I, I, I was going to say, I think... In, oh, it's Rules for Vanishing for those who don't know which one we're talking about. In, in lieu of not having read anything or having ever heard of any of the authors, I think then they go for cool titles. Right. And I would... And also because Kate Alice Marshall sounds very literary somehow. Or serial killer. Three names. True. True, true. Um, I think that would be my pick, too. Rules for Vanishing. Mary's going there. Brian? Ah, uh, Rules for Vanishing for me for the same reason. Dandelion? What was the what was the first one? Ah, uh, hang on, let me scroll he back up. He's got them in a different order than I do. Oh. Do, 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 do. Y A. Uh, it was the monsters. Of Here there are monsters. Yeah. I've actually heard of that one, so I'm going to go with that one. Okay. Okay. I and haven't read any of these either myself. I um have not read any of these. I really like the title "Rules for Vanishing." I really really like that. But again, I'm going to go based on publisher and Tortine. Uh, is the point. publisher for Five Midnight. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Okay. Next up, Superior Achievement in a Graphic Novel. Matt, we used to call them comic books. These days they call them graphic <laughs> novels. Uh, it's a different order. The nominees are, and it's the same nominees that we see every year, quite Basically, frankly. Basically, yes. Uh, Cullen Bunn mm -hmm. for Bone Parish Volume 2. Neil Gaiman for Neil Gaiman's Snow Glass Apples. Marjorie Liu for Monstrous Volume 4, Alessandro Manzetti for Calcutta Horror, and Go Tanabe for H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness. Um, <clears throat> let's go with Dave. Dave says, Neil Gaiman 
Because it's Neil Gaiman. People that don't read graphic novels and comics will vote they for this it, just yeah. because it's him. Mm-hmm. Matt, and you're it's sometimes agreeing? the only name they know of. Um, now, I think last year I voted for Monstrous because I believe that is a very, very good story. Right. But I lost last year, too. Um, did you? I can't remember. Yeah, I did. Okay. Monstrous didn't win last year. Um, I'm probably going to go with Gaiman just because I had bought Snowglass Apples and read it, and it was fucking fantastic. Great. It was great. So, yeah. Plus, it's game. The book? Wait, the book or the graphic name, novel? The graphic novel. I had, Yeah, I have the book. Um, you put his name on anything, it sells, so. I would just like him to adopt me. <laughs> <laughs> My feeling is that whenever there's somebody of uh, a certain degree of commercial fame on the nominations list, that's usually the person that people pick. I think they think that by osmosis, sometimes being near fame- uh, even though those people usually don't show up to the Stokers, uh, is going to somehow rub off on them. So I think that a lot of times those those people. Uh, so I get it. I'm going to go with Neil Gaiman too. I am really surprised. Mm. I 100 percent expect you to go with HP. Well, I mean, if it was me voting, I would. I would. I. I, <laughs> I love personally, 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 yeah. personally, yeah. Personally, but if I'm going by what I think is going to win, it's probably going to be. Because if it was me personally, I'd go for Monstrous again. Yeah, if it was me personally, I'd vote for Cullen Bunn's Bone Parish. Um, great fucking series. Not enough people are reading it. Unfuck that this week. But. The HWA membership will go with Neil Gaiman, so I'm going with Neil Gaiman. The only outlier to this that I see is that uh, the we HWA, all Neil Gaiman. even if they're not aware <laughs> of comic books and who's you know who's popular in comics, who's doing, um, Manzetti does a lot for the HWA. He does, and I think people are aware of who he is. Well, also Poppy Z is it. Poppy Z Bright's attached to that too. Is she? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. So that hmm. might be the he. I'm sorry, but if it's under Poppy, then it would. You know, that that's a great question, and I'm not right. being facetious to anybody in the listening audience. You know, if it's uh, on the Poppy, would you refer Billy's Billy's former pseudonym is Poppy Z Bright. Right, right. Written when Billy Billy's gen- identified as a woman. Right. So yeah, what is the linguistics? I'm when, not sure. If it's current work, it would be he, I would I would think. Right. It's listed Poppy Z Bright. See that to me that would be you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to Billy and ask. I'm curious, yeah, yeah because I'm I wouldn't curious. want to offend anybody. I'm I'm genuinely curious about how that's handled. Exactly, and you know, unless still writing as Poppy Z. I don't know. I don't know. But living as linguistically, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how. I mean, works. you could, you could opt for they, which is a safe catch-all, but Billy might not prefer that. So yeah, I'm gonna check with Billy this week yeah. and find out. Yeah. And but my the, apologies. I I didn't mean to be offensive anyway. I I've just I I assumed if it's under Poppy Z. Bright, it's, you know, right. an old, old work, I guess. Yeah. You know, old work somehow. Or you just don't want to change what you're writing under. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. I mean, could just be for that. Uh, I also have Gaiman because Gaiman. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I read him. I, yeah, I, I want him to get it. Okay. And adopt me. Next up, Superior Achievement in Long Fiction, a.k.a. the novella. The nominees are Victor Laval for Up from Slavery. Alessandro Manzetti for The Keeper of Chernobyl, Anna Taborska for The Cat Sitter, Sarah Tantlinger for To Be Devoured, and Karen Warren for Into Bones Like Oil. Great title. That's, Great see, title. That's, that's tough because I could see like four of those people winning. That's a tough one. I can't. Um, mostly because I think there are, are four people who HOA members are aware of. Well, Sarah won last year. Mm-hmm. So she's on everybody's radar. Uh, Victor and Alessandro are on everyone's radar. Um, I'm ashamed to admit I have not read Karen's or Anna's novellas. Mm-hmm. So I don't know anything about those two novellas. Um, but I know people are aware of Karen. I, I'm so I, I don't know the, the, um, the fifth one. I don't know Anna. Um, very well. So I, I mean, it's, I'm basically just going by what, who, you know, let's go with them. where these were published. Uh, Victor's, was published in Weird Tales. Mm-hmm. Alessandro's was published by Omnium Gatherum. Anna's was published by in an anthology called Shadow Cats. Sarah's was published in Unnerving. And Karen's was posted or published in Meerkat Shorts. I'm going with Victor. 
Because Weird Tales has the, the I'm going with Victor because I know a lot of people. There. Well, I think I think Weird Tales is uh, for people of our generation of writers. Weird Tales was always a bucket list, and for uh, I think I think for theme. I, I, and because it's Victor. And who doesn't love Victor? It's really? Victor, and it's theme, and it's weird tales. Yeah. It's a trifecta. Yeah. I think it's going to be Victor. Matt, what about you? They sold me. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What are we winning, anyway? Uh, the Bragging rights. The winner gets to give somebody they a like ad. a free ad on the show. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. Do you think that this actually affects how people vote? When they hear this? No. If, Not at all. Quite frankly, if I, the if I thought this impacted how people vote, we would never do this again. Okay. Because I, I would not want to be guilty of that. Right. right. I think people find we it We would talk about what yeah. should be voted yeah. for instead it's of what fun. will be. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if I thought this had any influence on how people vote, I'd tell you who the hell I want to win. Um, right, right. But I mean, for good or bad. I mean, it's almost like, oh, well, that jackass McFuckface said... <laughs> We're uh, we still call uh, you that. that this is the, you know we're all gonna vote for this guy, so let's vote for this guy. You know, I was just curious. <laughs> so who are you picking on that list then? Uh, well, first let's go with Dave. Dave says Victor because if he didn't pick him, then Phoebe <laughs> Phoebe would stab me. Is what he says here. Um, I got to tell you, this is it's this isn't one. the toughest. The toughest for me this year is poetry, and we'll get to that in a moment. Mm. Um, but this. This is tough. Uh, I'm torn between Victor, Alessandro, and Sarah. Hmm. Um, I'm going to take Alessandro out just because he publishes me, and I don't want people, even though we've said we're trying to pick who we think the membership will vote for. Right, right. I don't want people to oh, you just picked your publisher. Mm -hmm. Um... I say it's going to go to Victor, but I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. Too. I think it's going to be very think close, close. Matters no, but I, I think it, I think it ultimately it will go to Victor. But I think it's going to be put close. That on the cover of my book, I was close for the Stoker. <laughs> I was of, close. Speaking I was of close, close. <laughs> I was close. Once. Speaking of, close. I was talked to behind the scenes about making it to a ballot that I never made it on. One That's well, too much for put for to put on a book. Speaking right? of that. Uh, one of the stories that's up for superior achievement in short fiction was so close to making it on the ballot for the Splatterpunk Awards as well. Aww. Ultimately, it did not, and I'm not going to say which one it, it was, but obviously that story is on a lot of people's radars. Um, Aww. so let's go to superior achievement in short fiction. Uh, the nominees are The Book of Last Words by Greg Chapman, The Eight People Who Murdered Me, Excerpt from Lucy Westerna's Diary by Gwendolyn Keast. I like that title. Uh, She's awesome with titles. Bury Me in Tar and Twine by Jess Landry. I like that title. Lydia by Cindy O'Quinn. And A Touch of Madness by Tim Wagner. Bury Me in Tar and Twine sounds like something John Bowden would say. Well, Gwendolyn won, um, was it last year or the year before? She won last year, I believe, okay, yes. She won last year. Um... I definitely think she's she's on the radar of the HWA, and it is a really freaking awesome title. Um, I'm sorry, can you just read the names real quick one more time? Just the names: Greg Chapman, Jess Laundry, uh, Gwendolyn Kisty. Is that Keist, it's Keist? I believe. I think it's Keist. You know what the Cindy sad thing is? I, I asked her. And Tim Wagner. I asked her at the Stokers last year. You know, I don't know if you listen to the show. But I'm constantly mangling your name. Can you tell me the correct pronunciation? And she told me the correct pronunciation. The problem was I'd been drinking with Weston Oaks since like two that afternoon. So I don't remember what she told me. I blame Weston. He also Weston. doesn't realize he was talking to a potted plant the whole time. <laughs> no, it was Gwendolyn. <laughs> she never told you anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter because in 10 she years, after we get to know her really well, she's going to tell us it's pronounced a different way. <laughs> That's what Victor did. It's what John Irvison did. did. Yeah, you know, Haringa. Um, I, I think so, it's going to be Gwendolyn, although Tim Wagner could be an, an... I'd like you to pronounce it a ween from now on. The microphone is not picking either of you I don't up. care. All right, go ahead. What were you going to say? Um, and our engineer is checked out. He's over there. No, he's, he doesn't um, care. I'm, I'm waiting <laughs> until we get to the next thing. That's all. I, well, I who would you vote for? I think it's going to be Gwendolyn. You're going Gwendolyn. 
Yeah. What, we're on the poetry now? No. No. We're, we're still on short <laughs> fiction. You really have checked the balloon thing. Was that? Oh, I thought you were just doing a bit. You're really mad. No, he's it's upset. It's not just balloons, Brian. He's upset. There's far more to it than just balloons. <laughs> you've, you've heard him. Deep in his soul. I didn't do the balloon. It was Kazanowski. What was my choices? <laughs> Your choices are The Book of Last Words by Greg Chapman. Bury me in t- tar and twine. I'm probably not being loud enough. There's a first. Bury me in tar and twine. <laughs> Jess Landry. The eight people who murdered me. An excerpt from Lucy Westerno's what Weston Ross. That R is not where I thought it was. Diary. I'm not going to help her pronounce it. Gwendolyn Kisty. That's uh, what you're going with. I'm going with Kisty. I like it. Kisty. Kiss it. That's what she could say when she wins. Kiss it. Uh, Lydia from Cindy O'Quinn and A Touch of Madness, Tim Wigner. Touch of Madness. All right, so... Did Mary, you have a reason? I like the title. Nice. Mary, you voted for Gwendolyn. Yep. Mm-hmm. Matt, you voted for Tim. Yes. What does Dave say? Dave, uh... Dave says, Gwendolyn, lots of buzz for this online. That's mm-hmm. all he typed. So he's going there. What are you doing, Brian? I'm still torn. I'm torn between Gwendolyn. Which ones are you torn? Because I'm torn, too. I'm torn between Gwendolyn and Tim. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I'm torn between Lydia and Tim. Okay. Because Lydia's was in the Twisted Book of Shadows, which was all women, wasn't it? No, no, Hex Life was all women. Oh, Hex Life was the all women one. Twisted Book of Shadows was a lot of new authors. A lot of new authors. And kudos to Jim and Chris for that. And, you know, there's the whole... Tim's a white man. I'm just saying. What does that mean? He might not get the vote so against is, a bunch of women. So is Josh Mallerman. Yeah, but he might not him? get the vote of, vote against right, a bunch uh, of women. You're putting yourself in the mind of the voters. Um, I would never vote that way. I hate that I'm, process. I'm torn between Gwendolyn and Tim, and here's why. Of, of all the fine stories that are up for this, those are the two I've seen the most buzz for. Um, those are the two I'm certain the majority of the voting membership has read. Um, I'm going with Tim. I am too. I think he's due. I think he's due. I am too, only because I think that they want to kiss his ass more than they want to kiss other people. We're going to rename it the Josh Mellerman Award. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have Love one, you, two, three, four... Five, six more categories to hey, go. it's okay. We're six fine. It's fine. It's longer every year. Uh, superior Achievement in a Fiction Collection. Got Ted it. Chang for Exhalation Stories. Kate Jones for Lady Bits. John Langan for Safira and Other Betrayals. Sarah Reed for Out of Water. And Paul Tremblay for Growing Things and Other Stories. We can this, just move on to the next one. Yeah, this is a it's, solid... It's going yeah. to Paul. ...solid lineup. It is. Uh, it's going to Paul. It's, it's going, going to Paul. Paul. Matt, it's going to Paul. you concur? And if I was voting, it was going to Paul. So it's going to Paul. Yes. Yes. And let's go with Dave. Dave says Paul. He, Dave says, quote, Paul Tremblay, and he deserves it. Yep. Congrats, Paul. Okay. Uh... That was the easiest one on the whole thing. <laughs> Superior achievement in screenplay. And I'll warn you in advance, Dave has written me a rant for this one. Oh, yeah. Read there's... the rant first. Well, no, let's read who's up first. Oh, all right. Midsummer by Ari Oster. Stranger Things Season 3, Chapter 8, The Battle of Star Court by Ross Duffer and Matt Duffer. The Lighthouse by Max Eggers and Robert Eggers. Doctor Sleep by Mike Flanagan. And Us by Jordan Peele. Oh, that's a tough one. My vote is that's going. Tough. My vote is us for Jordan Peele. Why? Um, of all of those, it's probably the one most of the voting membership have seen. Uh, they tend not to historically. They tend not to vote for an episode of a longer running series. Mm-hmm. Uh, they tend to vote for movies. Um, I, I think that's why us will get it. Uh, Dave says, "Rant time." What should win is Stranger Things because season three was amazing and so much better than the first two because it was a horror story that just happens to take place in the 80s as opposed to an 80s nostalgia jizz fest with some horror elements. But it won't win. Midsummer will. But it shouldn't. 
Why? Because while it's a visually stunning movie and the lead actress is fantastic, the story script is a complete mess and is one of the most predictable ever told. For every cool moment, the tapestries, there are like five dumb ones. Everything is telegraphed. Say, that guy is carrying a giant mallet. Can't possibly imagine what he's going to do with that. And characters constantly make dumb decisions. Why, yes, I'll totally wander off with one of these creepy cult members because there's no way they would murder me. Oh, wait. People were raving about how smart this movie was when giant shark movies on sci-fi have a more compelling and complex plot. Ugh, I do not understand humans, but this will be the winner. Sadly, fuck you all, Dave Thomas. <laughs> okay, then. miss him. Okay, <laughs> then. miss him. Apparently, she's got opinions. Dave has an opinion? What's I yours? Don't think, I don't think Midsummer. I, I don't know. I don't... I think people... Okay, I think people want to believe that they get the intellectual stuff of, uh, like, The Lighthouse or Midsummer or... But I, I think when it comes down to it, they vote for the thing that's that's fun. The other issue with this category, which has been an ongoing issue, is that people are voting for the movie and not for the screenplay. Exactly. Um, and the movie incorporates a whole lot of other elements beyond the actual written screenplay. So I, I think it's kind of a skewed category to begin with. Um, I've always thought that HWA should remove this category. Yeah, but, because really what you're voting on is favorite horror movie. Right. You know? Um, but I think I'm leaning toward us. I'm leaning toward us because it's something that got a lot of buzz. Um, people said, you know, a lot of people enjoyed the movie. A lot of people, you know, had fun with it. And I think it's more accessible and more um, current, maybe than some of the other movies on the list. So two for us, one for Midsummer. Matt, what about you? Uh, I kind of agree with Dave that I would I would like to have seen Stranger Things win it, but at the same time, like you said, it's just an episode right. out of an entire season. So that's probably not going to go well. Um, I have not seen Us, but I do know that it's written very well, because they also... It, it, it's a hard line to follow to put comedy and horror into the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that movie did it really well. Right. Uh, I did watch Midsummer, and I agree with Dave on that, that that movie, albeit visually pleasing to watch, a lot of the stuff in it, as far as like dialogue and plot and everything, mm -hmm. kind of don't make sense. Yeah, character motivations fall yeah. apart after a while. And the, and the Lighthouse is one of those movies where, kind of like when I watched Mandy... It's like a, do you get it? Right. Do you get what I'm trying to, right. do you understand my art? You know, and you're just kind of like, can you tell me a fucking story instead of it just being cryptic? I did not care for the lighthouse. No, I didn't either. No. So I'm probably going to go with us. Okay. Kelly Owen. Kelly Owen's going to be a, the offset one and talk about the one none of you even thought of. I am going with Dr. Sleep. Okay. And I'm going with Dr. Sleep for a couple of reasons. First... For the ginormous portion of the voting pool who sees movie, not screenplay. Yes. Yeah. Secondly, it's attached to King, and they yes. like to give him awards for anything, even though he won't get one for this. Right. No. And he but it's won't attached. show up. He and he won't show up. up. He's not coming, and you don't get to lick him. So I mean, he's he not going to be there. He won't take the, the motorcycle trip to California with me that I proposed. He's well, certainly yeah, not no, going to He's not going to do it. But in defense of the movie itself, I personally think it was one of the most perfectly executed sequels that I have seen in a very, very long time. And here's where the screenplay gets the credit. The book version of The Shining mm -hmm. ended very differently yes. than yes. the Jack yeah. Nicholson version. Yes. And they changed the Dr. Sleep book version enough in screenplay to make it match Nicholson's. Really? Beautifully. And in several... I don't want to give it away because you haven't seen it yet. But in several areas... It differed purposely so it would so match it was, up it, right, to right. the Nicholson version of The Shining. Oh, that's cool. The problem with the general public and it how it did at the box office was that they didn't understand that it was a sequel to The Shining. Apparently, a lot of people didn't realize that's what it was. I know. Humans are stupid. I'll say it. Dave's not here. Um, but because it's attached to King, because it's... Yeah. Um, it, it was actually a well done uh, script. Right. 
I'm, I'm going with Dr. Sleep. Okay. Anthology. The nominees. Oh, anthology. You ready, Kel? Go. Okay. The nominees are A Secret Guide to Fighting Elder Oh, we Gods don't have to argue about this one at by all. By Jennifer Brozak. Ellen Datlow's Echoes, the Saga Anthology of Ghost Stories. Christopher Golden and James A. Moore for The Twisted Book of Shadows. Eric Guinard for Pop the Clutch, Thrilling Tales of Rockabilly Monsters and Hot Rod Horror. And Robert S. Wilson for Knox Paradoilia. See, I would love to give it to the Elder Gods one. It doesn't it's matter. Gods. But I think it's going to come down to Ellen or Chris and Jim. It's going to be Ellen. It's almost... I mean... Ellen, I think, is a perennial favorite. I have this book. It's a great book. It deserves it. But we're not talking about that. Who they're going to vote for, it's going to be Ellen. See, lots of things. Who they're going to vote for, I think that, again, I think for the same reason, you, the, it, the hug fest idea. The hug fest. I think it's people, a hug fest. People want Ellen to notice them. And, and so I think there's, there's an element of that. Um, but you bring up a good point about Twisted Book of Shadows. It's a lot of new writers. It's a lot of new writers. There's a lot of women And a lot of involved. new writers are in HWA. So yep. I think it may be split. Can I, can I, can I vote for a split? No. No. I can't vote for a split. No. I mean, you can vote for a tie. A tie. That's what yeah, I mean. you, It's not going to happen. Well, no, but we've allowed tie voting on this show before. Can I tie vote? You can tie vote. I'm going to tie vote. Spineless. That's how I will. Pick one. Very well. Um, it's, Mary too. It's always a safe bet that if Ellen is up for an award, Ellen will get the award. Yes. Uh, and deservedly so. This year, <laughs> sorry. I think given the table of contents for Twisted Book of Shadows, I think it will go to that. I think it will be close, mm -hmm. but I ultimately think uh, Chris and Jim will get it. Dave says, Golden and Moore, usually Ellen Datlow is a safe pick here, but I really think Chris and Jim will take it. Chris yeah. and Jim. Chris and Jim says Matt. Yep. I'm going with Ellen. Mostly, whatever you people say, I'm just going to go opposite. <laughs> okay. You're just going to be contrary. Just going to be contrary. Uh, superior achievement in nonfiction. Now, I only read one of these. Yeah, I'm okay. not going to know anything about this. Uh, it's Katie Hendrix. Jonathan Greenaway and Eleanor Beale, Horror and Religion, New Literary Approaches to Theology, Race, and Sexuality. Oh. Uh, Harriet Earl Rolls off the tongue. for gender, sexuality, and queerness in American horror story critical essays. Alexandra Heller Nicholas for masks in horror cinema, eyes without faces. John B. Kachuba for shapeshifters, a history. And Lisa Kroger and Melanie R. Anderson for monster. She wrote the women who pioneered horror and speculative fiction. That is my pick. That's my pick, too. It yep. is a phenomenal book. I haven't read it yet. I have it, but I haven't read uh, it yet. It's phenomenal. It's important. I'm so glad somebody wrote it. And it's the one of these that I see everyone talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, Monster She Wrote. What'd Dave say? Dave says... Hang on. My computer's doing funny things here. Dave says... Hang on. I gotta go buy his Midsummer rant again. Uh, Monster She Wrote. <laughs> okay. Mary? Yeah, Monster She Wrote, because uh, I think it's one of the few names people know, uh, Lisa Kroger. And also, like like Brian said, I think it's, uh, you know, I, it's the one book I've heard talked about. I originally was going to go with Masks, just because I feel like that's an important topic with horror, because there's a lot of things pertaining to, you know, mask-covered villains and stuff right. in horror. Agreed. But when you got to the final topic, yeah, that is much more of an important, like, no uh, document that needs to be done. Yes. So. Yep, yep. 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 Okay. We have two categories left. Superior achievement in short nonfiction. Uh, Wait, that's a new one? Yep, that's a new one. Yeah. Wow. So you got the nonfiction You can win book. for anything now. I'm submitting my grocery list. And yet there. there's still no podcast category. It's because you're not writing it. You're speaking it. Bullshit, I'm not writing it. Yeah, but audiobook isn't on here. Look at these notes. I know, but audiobook isn't on here. Well, That's their justification. Therefore, is that if it's podcast not written, is not which on Which is why here. the screenplay thing was so contested, because it's um, writing. there's no access to the general public for right. screenplays. Right, right, right. Something's coming up my laptop here. I'm having technical problems. <laughs> I'd ask, I'd ask Matt to take a look at it for me, but he's already mad yeah. at me. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's talking to you anymore. All I right. would just like to point out his vote on the last four 
were directed directly at me. He's not looking at you. Oh, I know. I, like I said, I thought it was a bit. Now I really no, this is not a bit. He's he's, he's really got an issue you. with me. So we'll we'll talk about I that. I looked off at the you air. just a second ago when I said about the mask thing, and then you agreed with me, probably See, just to make me feel good. Here's the thing: when <laughs> when you're reading people in poker or in intimidation for certain organized crime families or whatever, there's always a tell that 99.9 percent of people have when they're talking like this, and then they're I I the the higher their voice goes. Uh, yeah, I do that. The more they're trying to hide or the more they're trying to bullshit you. <laughs> I do that. I'm not going to lie. I've worked very hard on on, on, on working on that tell. because My tell is I'm... that I can't control my facial expressions. Nope. So I roll my eyes when I really shouldn't. <laughs> I've, I've seen that a couple of times. I know you yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. All right. Superior achievement in short nonfiction. Gwendolyn. Did we come to a, a consensus of Kisty. how Kisty? I like Kisty. I don't think that's right. You know what, though? It about? gives her the opportunity to tell us we're wrong. Well, I would really like her to be on the show, and that would be question number one. How the hell do you pronounce your last name? How's it spelled? K-I-S-T-E. I would say Kisty. Kisty. I see. It's stupid Weston's fault. If he hadn't got me drunk, I'd remember. Because she told me how to pronounce it. It was a plant. I mean, then again, you it never was know. It not a plant. <laughs> because before we Giant had... Giant uh, FICA, buddy. Before we had Coley Esnick on here, I thought it was Colesnick, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. That's I have true. no idea. That's true. J.M. DeMatteis. Chris and I, on Defender's Dialogue, kept pronouncing it Dematteis. Mm. I would have um, said that, too. Yeah, I would have so, said that, too. All right. Gwendolyn... For magic, <laughs> madness, and women who creep, the power of individuality in the work of Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Uh, Vince Laguna, Laguno. We never for, know how to pronounce his yeah, last name either. I've mangled Vince's name for 10, 15 years mm-hmm. now. Uh, slasher films made me gay. The queer appeal and subtext of the genre. Karen J. Renner for the evil aging women of American horror story. Kelly Robinson for films first Lycanthrope, 1913's The Werewolf, and Valerie E. Wyke for Lord Byron's Whipping Boy, Dr. John William Polidori, and the 200th anniversary of The Vampire. Uh, hmm. I'm going with Gwendolyn for this one. Um, who was the second one? Uh, Vince Laguana. I'm going with Vince. Okay. Whoa. I'm trying to remember all these titles because they're very long. There was the one about the... The uh, Evil Aging Women of American Horror Story. That's the one I want to go with. There you go. I know how he rolls. What's Dave want? Dave says, Gwendolyn, there is so much buzz about her online that I think people who are not familiar with these works will pick her just based on name recognition. And again, a disclaimer, people. We're not disparaging anyone. No, no. We're not saying who deserves to win. We're not saying this is why this person won. We're playing Vegas odds makers, thinking like Vegas odds makers, right. thinking like the voting membership. Right. I would hate for Gwendolyn to win this award and then say, oh, well, it's only because Dave said they're giving it to me because, you know, they know my name. That's not the case. Right. Okay. Um, anytime anybody gives you an award, Cherish that shit and honor it and, and know that you, you know, you earned it. Um, and ignore this stupid little podcast and what we're doing. <laughs> All right. I. Yes, Kelly. <laughs> I'm going to go a completely different direction as I, as I do. Um, I personally love Lord Byron and everything to do with ancient poetry. Um, but I think that the voting public might go for Lord Byron based on the pretentious idea of it being Lord Byron. <laughs> we have class. We have culture, damn it. God damn it, I'll prove it. I'm going to vote for Lord Byron. <laughs> you know, it just occurred to me, I don't think I have anything Lord Byron related for my history of horror fiction. You did. Really? You did the vampire, I thought. Polidori's vampire? No, not yet. Oh, what, really? year, what year did that come out? Well, this is the 200th anniversary, so 1720. Yeah, <coughs> Holy shit, I, I 18, skipped... 1820. 1820. Yeah, 1820. Oh, no, okay, okay no, so no, it's coming up then. Okay. Mm. See, this is this is what happens. This is what happens. They give me an undertaking like this, and... All I'm, hell breaks I'm gonna fuck it up, because I'm rushing so I can get to the splatter pump. I have, like, a whole <laughs> shelf of Lord Byron if you need help. All right. 
Final category, this was the tough one for me, and I'm going to get into why. Superior Achievement in a Poetry Collection. I'll have you know I have two highlighted for a reason. It was okay. rough. Nominees are Linda D. Addison and Alessandro Manzetti for The Place of Broken Things. Great title. Octavia Cade for Mary Shelley Makes a Monster. Donna Lynch for Choking Back the Devil. Michelle Scalise for Dragonfly and Other Songs of Mourning. Marge Simon and Brian D. Dietrich for The Demeter Diaries. And Stephanie Wojtovich for The Apocalyptic Mannequin. See... Great titles. Four of those people have already won So many of these have great titles. Yeah, they do have great titles. And four of them have already won Stokers. So uh, we know at least four of those people are on the HW radar. It's tough. This is a super tough category. Let's go with Dave while we all think about it. Dave says, Linda Addison no way would I ever bet against her. <laughs> kind of how I felt. Okay, right, and there, right. there is that. Yeah, there is if that. If you think horror poetry, you think Linda Addison. It's Linda. Right. But Period. you also think, I mean, the HWA also thinks Mark Simon and Stephanie. See, I think Stephanie is very, Stephanie's very hot new. right now. Yeah. She's very hot right now. And they may actually, and she's my other highlight. My highlight was between Linda and Steph. Um, because... Are they going to look at it and be like, well, Linda has enough. Okay, like she a whole wall of her office is just awards because she's awesome. Let's <laughs> give it to Steph. Right, right. So I'm going to actually lean that direction. Okay. I adore Linda. So you're and voting- I, don't, I don't like voting against Linda, but I think that they may decide Linda's had it. Let's give, let's give it to Steph. So you're voting for Stephanie. Yeah. Mary, what about you? I want to go with Marge Simon. You're going with Marge Simon. I think Marge Simon is is um, fairly regularly. Uh, I, I mean, I think she makes it to the nominations list every year, as far as I can tell. Um, and I think she's won a number of Stokers. Probably not as many as Linda, but she's probably more familiar to HWA, probably even than Stephanie. So I'm going to go with Marge. Stephanie's all over our social media and everything, though. So, Matt, what about you? Kelly sold me on Stephanie just from that explanation alone, because the idea of you're going to have that point where even if you're great, mm-hmm. that Academy's going to, like, I think you got enough. Right, right. We need somebody new. Well, you know Just a fresh face right. for this year. Yeah. We'll give it to you next year. Don't worry. Right, yeah. right. All right. I read The Place of Broken Things. Um, I read The Apocalyptic Mannequin. And I read Dragonfly and Other Songs of Mourning. All right. Aww. So I'm going to take out Octavia Cade and March Simon and Brian Dietrich only because I didn't read theirs. Okay, so I can't make an informed decision. So I'm looking at Linda and Alessandro, HWA favorites. I'm looking at Marge, or excuse me, I'm looking at Stephanie, really hot right now, and deservedly so. Deservedly so. But I'm looking at Michelle's Dragonfly and Other Songs of Mourning, and here's the thing. It's a book about Tom Pickering. I, I can't read it. Yeah, I can't it read it. Um, but how many people don't know? I because think, of the different last name, how many pe- how many young oh, writers don't realize who she is? I, I because, I don't, as you said, the HWA I, I is a think, lot of young people right I don't, now. I don't think those young people are qualified as voters, though. I think they're still earning that. Um, I, you know, there's one person in this industry other than Jesus Gonzalez, who everybody got along with. Everybody. Pick. And that was Tom Piccarelli. Um, and the HWA adored him. Mm-hmm. And I'm going for the dark horse. I think it's going to go to Michelle. Okay. So, there we and have I'm, it. Who did, uh, Dave pick Linda. Dave, Dave pick Linda, Linda because... Yep. Uh, Linda, Linda, Linda and Alessandro. <laughs> because Linda. So, all right. Well, there you have it. There's our picks again, again. Congratulations to everybody. We are not trying to take away from anyone's experience. We're just having a little bit of fun. Okay. We don't know anything. No. Yeah. So, you know. I don't care how you vote. The winner, whichever one of us picks the most, gets to pick an ad for the person or product of our choice. Um, And that ad will actually air on the new Brian Keene Radio Network. Nice. So so there we go. So next week, next week, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Got lost my place because I'm still scrolling through Dave's rant about Midsummer every time I go through the show notes here. Um, 
Next week, it's sort of not live. Uh, Mary and I will actually be in New York at the tour offices. We'll be talking to the staff of Nightfire. Uh, Kelly will be home writing, and Matt will be on vacation. Uh, so what we're going to have for you is a panel discussion about writing your first novel. I'm going to sit down with first-time novelists J. Edwin Buja, Mary Hart, Michelle Renee Lane, up for the Stoker Award, as a matter of fact, Sherry Sebastian Gabriel, and Tony Tremblay, and uh, we're going to hear from them about their first novels, the process. Uh, we're also going to pre-record a thing where each of us is going to talk about our first as well. So, Aww. Kelly, we, we all get to hear about your first. <laughs> That's okay. He doesn't listen to this. <laughs> um, week after that, as I said, tour night fire uh, coming up. Michael Cisco, uh, make me read your book. All kinds of other fun stuff. Maybe Matt will be here in future shows. Maybe not. Aww. We'll figure that out. Depends on how. For what it's worth, he says a lot of nice things about you. I do. You Too know? bad I don't hear him. Just yeah. I don't say him on the air because <laughs> you know there's he, no he comedic says, value. He in says that. nice things about me, and I never hear them either. He so. doesn't say them on the air, but he doesn't say them to me personally either. <laughs> no, he never says. He never says nice things to me personally either. <laughs> I say them to my cat. Well, that's good. That's my a, cat knows. That's, that's important. important. Your cat knows all. That's important. All right, folks. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.